My name is Lilikum. This video is going to be an in-depth guide to show you exactly what you need to do to plan your schooling successfully. Scheduling your schoolwork is extremely important. What you don't plan, you don't get done. I was homeschooled for seven years and I completed my IG levels and AS levels at the end of my schooling career all on my own and it would not have been possible if I didn't have this system going that I perfected over the course of like the two, three years that I was doing my IG and AS levels. Waking up in the morning and knowing exactly what you're going to do is so much easier than waking up to just like the unknown. Like, guess I'll do some school today. That's very vague and can be very demotivating because you don't have a goal that you're working towards. And that's exactly what this video is made for. So that you have a goal that you can work towards every day so that at the end of the day, when you're lying in your bed trying to fall asleep, you're like, Today was a good day, you know, I worked well and you feel content. To give you an idea, this is kind of what we're gonna be looking at. This is a sheet that I made to kind of keep track of how many pages per day I'm doing on the left-hand side here. So I don't, you know, fall behind and so that I'm able to finish in time for my revision time or for whenever my exam is. And then on the right-hand side here, I have exactly what I'm going to be doing every single day for each subject that I was doing at the time down here. I will give you a blank template that you can use in Google Sheets to try to replicate what I did and kind of make it work for yourself. I use Google Sheets in a combination with Google Calendar, for example, something that looked like this to keep track of exactly what I was doing every day. Now, this is very in-depth, but I just needed to keep track of exactly how many post papers I was doing when I was doing revision right before my exam because otherwise I would lose my mind out of stress and that's no fun. So maybe I was a bit fanatical when it came to it. And then also when revision time came around, I also had a revision sheet that I made so I could accurately keep track of my revision and know exactly what I was doing every day. But let's just get into it. So firstly, a bit about Google Sheets. This is what Google Sheets looks like. I had a separate table for my AS levels and then for my IGCSE levels. And then I also had a separate sheet down here for each of the subjects that I was doing. How it works is there are all these tiny little blocks and they're kind of numbered based on which column, which is the vertical bit, and then which row, which is the horizontal bit, it is placed in. So for example, A1 would be here because it's in column A in row one. Google Sheets has this cool thing where you can multiply, divide, add and subtract numbers by just putting in which block they're in. So here you can see that I'm subtracting eight from 96, but instead of putting in eight and 96, I can put in A6, which is where this block is situated and A1, which is where that block is situated. And then it gives me the answer over here which is 88. 96 minus 8 is 88. The symbols you use to be able to do these calculations, pretty straightforward. For a plus, it's just a plus. For a minus, it's just a minus. If you want to multiply, you use the star. That's the multiplication symbol. And if you want to divide, you use a slash like that. And um, that's how you divide numbers. So it's pretty straightforward. I did color some of my blocks. You can just use that by going over here and then clicking full color and you can choose whichever cover color you like. You can choose this disgusting mustard color if you like, but I will not be doing that. That doesn't really matter, it's just kind of easier to keep track of things, I guess. So firstly, before we get into the Google Sheets a bit more, the first thing you want to do when planning your schooling is to get your textbooks and just have a look at them and see how many pages you will have to complete to finish your textbook. You then want to go and determine how many days you have before you need to start revising. So what I did is I would go into the, wait, actually, let me just hide all of my stuff so that you can't see everything. I would go and set my calendar in Google Calendar to month. And then I would go from whichever day I'm starting my school on and I would count exactly how many days I have before whenever my revision started. So as you can see here, when I was doing physics for my AS levels, I had 96 days to complete 257 pages. Something important to note when it comes to figuring out how many days you have to complete your schoolwork is to not count the weekends and days that you aren't going to be working. So for example, if you have like six weeks to do your schooling, there will only be 24 days because there are only four days in a week since you're only working till Friday if you're not like a psychopath working on the weekends as well. Also, if you're gonna be taking holidays and have some days off for like public holidays, for example, you also want to just take away those days as well so that you don't have an inaccurate representation of the amount of days that you actually have before your revision starts. You want to make sure that these two values are absolutely correct and perfectly calculated because these numbers are what the rest of your planning will be built on. Then to get this, your fixed rate or the rate that you need to work at to complete your work, you just divide the pages you have left 
by the days you have left. And that gives you your fixed rate. So as you can see, I had to do 2.52 pages per day to be able to complete my schooling by the time I wanted to start my revision. Another number that you need to know, which is just as important, is the rate at which you are actually working. So the difference between these two numbers is that the one is what you need to be working at. So as I said, I needed to be working at about three pages per day. However, the rate I wish I was working was five pages per day because I wanted to finish it quicker. So I know that might be a bit confusing, but allow me to kind of explain that to you. The rate at which you are working, so that is not the goal, but rather the reality of your situation. That is the amount of pages that you have done already divided by the amount of days that have passed since you started working. Okay, cool. So now you have your fixed rate, which is your goal rate, and then your actual rate or the rate that you're currently working at. This number over here is actually a little thing I set up to compare those two rates, my fixed rate and my current rate. So as you can see, what it is, it is my fixed rate minus my current rate. So this actually took me a while to figure out myself, but essentially if you're in the negative, that means that you are working more than you have to and you're in the green. If that value is positive, that means that you aren't working enough and you need to be working more. So as you can see here, my goal rate was 2.52 and I was working at 6.25, which means I was doing 3.73 pages per day more than I had to. And that is what this number here represents. However, let's say you aren't doing as much as you need to every day, then that number will be positive and that will represent how many pages more you should be doing each day to be able to complete your schooling within the time frame that you have. If this is your yearly plan, this is your weekly plan. And that is what we're gonna focus on now. So what you're gonna to need to do is have a weekly tracker to keep track of what you're doing each week so you can update these numbers. So as you can see, I had a day number and that's the number of days that have passed since I started my schooling. So in the first week, as you can see, four days passed in that week, I did 25 pages, which is how many pages I completed at the end of the week, of course. Then the amount of days I have left is a pretty simple calculation. It's just the amount of days that I have to complete everything in total, minus the days that have already gone by. It's a pretty simple calculation. Then same thing for pages I have left. The amount of pages I have left is the amount of pages I need to do, minus the pages that I've already done. And that's the only thing you really need. Um, that's your weekly tracker done. If you're using this system, you're gonna have to update it every week. So for example, what I would do is let's say this week is over now. I would take all this. The way I did this, by the way, is you click, you hold shift and then you click over here. It'll select everything from there to there. Then hit control C, click on the block right below there and then hit control V and it'll copy the entire value. So as you can see, Google Sheets is screaming at you and that is for a good reason. If you go up here and click, you'll see that because you copy pasted a whole row, it actually changed the value of some of the numbers. So what's happening here now, because I copy pasted is that it wants to subtract 56 from the word days, which doesn't make sense. So what you'll need to do is you have to go back and then just turn that back to A1 and then Google Sheets is happy again because you know, the blocks actually represent values now. Same thing here, because I copy pasted it, it moves the block down one by one. So we want B1 to be the block that we are subtracting from. However, because we copy pasted, it has moved to B2. So what we do is we just go in and turn that to B1. And just like that, Google Sheets is happy again. So you'll have to do that every week. Another thing you have to change every week when you're copy pasting your rows is your fixed rate and current rate the values that it is using. So as you can see here, I changed the equation to calculate the rate to be using the values from week one, just for example sake, but we want the rate to be calculated using the values of the week that we are currently in. So what you'll go and do is instead of D5, we want it to be D18, right? Because we want it to be these values here. So you go and just change that to D18. You go over here, change that to D18. And as you can see, the right blocks are highlighted now and you're good to go. So also for the current rate, you wanna do the exact same thing. As you can see, it's using the wrong values. We want to be in the 18th row. So we change that to, whoops, my bad. We change that to 18 and then you are ready for the next week and you can go about your life. So this whole setup will take a bit of a while. It'll be made a lot easier by the template that you can go look at in the description. I'll leave it there so you can go use that to kind of start out and not have to do a lot of the work that I did when I started out. But going through each subject that you have, checking how many 
pages there are that you need to do and then putting it all in this table won't take you that long but it will take you a bit of a time but that's kind of just the investment that you need to put in so that it's a lot easier later on to just do your planning for every day because you can see exactly what you need to do after putting in that work at the beginning of every week i want you to sit down with your textbooks and then based on how many pages you need to do per day figure out exactly what you're going to be doing every day and that is what we're looking at over here so as you can see i set up a bit of a schedule for myself um it's pretty straightforward these numbers over here represent the week that we're in we have monday till friday and we also have the weekends for in case i had to do some catch-up work and then I would lit literally write down which pages I would do every single day for that week. This is where you need to use some common sense. Let's say you have to do three pages per day. That doesn't mean that you have to start at page one and finish at page three on that day because chapters aren't divided up like that. Sometimes a chapter will be four pages or two pages or six pages. So you want what you're doing to make kind of chronological sense. So let's say a chapter is longer that day rather do the whole chapter and then do less the next day. Or if it's a very small chapter that day, do less that day, but then make up for what you didn't do that day in the next day. To keep track of all this, I had this tally at the end. So what this represents here is that if I did this plan over here, this is the amount of pages that I would have done at the end of the week. So for example, here I would know that if I do 25 pages per day, for four days that's roughly like what six pages per day and then we're well in the green for how much i should be working so besides my yearly and then weekly planner i would also have a daily planner that would go into even more detail and that is where google calendar comes in so as you can see here this is what i would do to plan out my day at the beginning of every day i want you to sit down look at your weekly plan and see which pages you wrote down that you had to do that day. And then I want you to give yourself a certain amount of hours to complete each subject based on the amount of pages that you need to do that day. For example, if you know that you need to do three pages for physics, that's not very long, and that'll maybe take you like, what, 45 minutes? So for example, let's say you're starting at eight. You can say, okay, for 45 minutes, I will be doing physics. And then you have that set out. Then let's say for bio, you need to do six pages that day. That's a bit more. That'll maybe take you like an hour and a half, right? Then you go in and put that down and say bio. And that way you're keeping track of what you need to do that day. And that's just to kind of give you a goal to work towards. Oftentimes your guess will be incorrect when it comes to how long it'll take to do something. But the nice thing about Google Calendar is that you can literally just shift that around. So let's say your physics uh, takes you a bit longer than you thought because it's a hard concept to understand that you're learning that day. Well, you just shift bio up a bit, make physics take a bit longer, and you're good to go again. It's not the end of the world. The idea again is not to give you a rigid timetable that you have to keep to. It's just to give you a general idea and a goal to work towards every day so that you don't waste time because you know that this is the ideal for the day. So again, this is a real life example here. You can see that I was starting at 6 a.m. every day because I'm an insane person, but um, I would wake up at like 5.45, print out my pause paper and do a pause paper until about eight. I'd go for a run, have breakfast, take a bit of a break, you know, shower, do all that. And then I would start with other work till about 12. I'm not entirely sure what I was doing in these two hours here, but maybe like my mom asked me to go buy milk or something, or like I had some errands to run. Then I came back at two, start doing another two pause papers, finished by five, gave myself a bit of a break, did another pause paper, and then I had some other stuff to attend to by the end of the day. Personally, I really like being able to look back at a week and see exactly what I did to kind of have a gauge for how tired I feel at the end of the week. So I'll know if I overworked myself and then I have a literal visual representation of what I was doing to be like, okay, this is how much I was doing that day. Maybe I should do a bit less this week so that I don't burn out. Or in the case of past papers, it's really cool because you can go see exactly which past papers you were doing and you have a record of that. And that makes life a lot easier. So as I said, when revision came around, I did actually go and make a revision timetable. This is a pretty bad representation. So I'm gonna go to my IG timetables instead. So as you can see here, I had a revision timetable set up. What I did was I would have a column for each specific subject that I was revising for. Then I have just the list of days that exists in a week. I made it easier to kind of visually keep track of by having the weekdays be a lighter color than the weekends. And then I would just say, okay, on Monday for computer science, I'm going to revise chapter one. On Tuesday, I did two, three, and four. 
Thursday 5 and 6. And then you can kind of mix and match your revision. And you want your exam dates to be very present. So you can see exactly what you're working towards. That's kind of how you can keep track of your revision and the way I did it using Google Sheets. I made a whole other video on revision and pause papers and how to plan that. So you can go check that out if you like. But yeah, that's how I avoided losing my mind with stress as I was homeschooling. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or you found anything I said to be a bit vague, feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments below. I'm more than happy to reply to them. If you like this video, give it a like. Maybe share it with someone you think might find it helpful. This is pretty much what this channel is all about. So why not subscribe? Stick around for a while. You can always unsubscribe later. But that's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I spent about 40 minutes recording this. So editing it is going to be cut of the experience. But that's the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And good luck on your studying journey.